he, where are you? Can you hear Jesus calling this morning? There is a sound that is going out. If only you tune in to hear what God is saying this morning. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This morning I want to speak, I want to preach on the subject, there is a sound. There is a sound. Praise the Lord, everybody. There is a sound. There is a sound. Amen. There is a sound. I'm waiting to hear for that sound that is going to come from the, the people of God that are going to acknowledge that there is a sound. There is a sound. Amen. There is a sound. Sound is very important part of communication. It's, a, it's, it's an integral part of communication. We need sound. Now, before I go into the main part of my preaching this, uh, this morning, I just want to talk about sound um, because sound has become something of a, 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 a thing that I like nowadays. I, I love sound. I've always loved sound. I've always loved sound especially good sound. Uh, I love good sound. Uh, good music, good bass, uh, <laughs> maybe a few other instruments, but maybe the bass. <laughs> good sound always, always gets me moving. If you, if you want to get me going, if you want to get me interested, have something with sound, have some music going. So for those of you that usually are here early, you would notice uh, when I've, when, the first thing I usually do is, uh, before I do anything, once the sound system is on, I put music on because sound gets me going. <laughs> At the end of service, some of you probably are aware I <laughs> usually have music on because sound gets me going. So I, I love sound. But sound is very interesting. It's, it's very interesting when, when, you, when, you, when, you start, when you begin to like a sound. So I'm going to try and do a, a simple science lesson, and I apologize if I do uh, kind of... Uh, <laughs> butcher any of the uh, facts that I have on here. Uh, some of them were from Wikipedia, some from Google, some from any other sources. So uh, <laughs> they could be wrong, but they, they seem to be, you know, the majority seem to be talking about the same thing. So I went on the basis of majority always has uh, uh, <laughs> something that is right in there. So sound is the type of energy uh, made by vibration. Uh, it's simply sound is simply vibration. That's that's all it is. When you when when you look at the essence of it, um, when when an object vibrates, it causes movement in the surrounding air uh, molecules. These molecules then bump onto other molecules uh, close to them, and so causing them to vibrate as well. And then as this goes on and on, it becomes a sound wave. Now we know of a sound wave. And it's simply, basically, that what you're hearing of me now is just molecules that are vibrating. But as they vibrate, they vibrate around the air. And at some point, they reach your ears. And your ears takes the information and converts them to what you can understand. And for me, that's very interesting to think. It's just molecules that are vibrating. And they vibrate next to each other. And, and the sound then travels as a wave to, to your ears which then your ears picks them up and then turns them into something that is useful for them, for, your, for you to be able to understand what I'm saying. It's basically a simple chain reaction of vibration that out of my mouth as I speak, 
you hear the sound, it's a vibration. Just as if I was to clap or if I was to tap this, that is a vibration that you've just heard. Uh, and your body has processed that information to say, this is what this sound might be. Um, sound changes as it travels through different mediums. So as gas, as liquid, and uh, in air. Uh, interesting fact that sound cannot, tra uh, tra um, you, uh, sound cannot um, travel through vacuum because there's nothing to vibrate against. Vacuum is emptiness. And so when, there's, when, it, when you're in a vacuum, you won't be able to hear anything. So if you're in space, you won't be able to hear any sound. <laughs> uh, when you're in space, you cannot hear any sound whatsoever. So you can only hear sound if there is molecules, if there's uh, some type of um, molecule that allows the vibration to be able to pass, to be passed on from one place to the next. And so uh, that's why gas, air, and liquid are the main forms that sound can travel through. So, uh, Simple, some simple facts that I, I looked at. No, no. So uh, sound, or, uh, sound travels at the speed of 1,230 kilometers or 767 miles per hour. That's the, the, the speed of sound. And that's why oftentimes when, when I speak or when people speak, you can hear them immediately, but it takes time. So if your hearing was excellent um, and you were about let's say 767 miles away from me, in about an hour, <laughs> in, in about an hour, you'll be able to hear what I exactly said. <laughs> that's, how, that's how sound travels. Um, sound um, travels through water faster than it does through air, about four times faster through water than it does through air because um, water is more solid than air. And it travels even faster through bones than it does through water. Uh, um, so yeah, just some facts there uh, for you in case you wanted to know. If you want, if you want sound to travel faster, just have bones connected together, and tra sound will travel very, very fast. <laughs> um, here's another one. This one I, I had to giggle when I heard this. Uh, cows that listen to music tend to produce more milk than cows who don't. So any farmers out there, <laughs> if you want more milk, <laughs> put music on for your cows. They will produce more milk. <laughs> that's, that's a scientific fact. <laughs> they tend to produce more milk. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, I had to giggle on that one. Um, uh, a volcanic eruption has the la loudest natural sound that you can ever hear. So if you ever happen to be near a uh, a volcano that is erupting, you'll have heard the loudest natural sound you can hear. Um, there, are three types, uh, there are three types of sound. So there is what is known as infrasonic. Uh, these are frequencies anywhere below 1,000, uh, below 20 hertz. Um, there, there are sonic, which is sound frequencies between 20 hertz and uh, 20,000 hertz, which is what? most of us can hear, which is what is audible to us. And then there is ultrasonic, um, which is the sounds that we cannot pick up. These are sounds that uh, dogs and, and bats are able to hear. So sounds that we cannot pick up, but other animals uh, in the animal kingdom are able to hear. Also, the frequencies below 20 hertz, there are animals that are able to hear, pick up, that we ourselves cannot pick up. For instance, elephants uh, can, can listen, can hear sounds that are below 20 hertz. Uh, and it's fascinating that um, after the 2005 tsunami that happened in Thailand, uh, they, in a lot of resorts nowadays, in nowadays where um, they tend to have uh, tsunamis, they have elephants around because elephants can pick up these vibrations from hundreds of kilometers away, literally hundreds of kilometers away. And when they pick them up, they begin to run the opposite direction to where the sound is coming. And so when you're in these results and you see an elephant running away, follow the elephant. <laughs> follow the elephant. It will save your life. And so, yeah, so they, they tend to use these elephants because they pick up the frequencies of, of, you know, these earthquakes that are happening underneath the sea that ultimately cause tsunamis. So very, very interesting, very, very fascinating. Uh, when I, I was looking up sounds, I thought to myself, my goodness, elephants are useful. 
those those ears and the you know the big the big bones of their body that they, they they're useful for something. So that is that is sound in in its essence. Now um, the reason why I say that there is a sound is because um, of recent I I have been uh, in in a way I've been I've been looking at what is happening around us and and I tend to do this where I just look at what's happening around us and just see what God is. Tr- I, almost like trying to second guess God. And I'm like, what is God trying to do? And there is a sound. If, you, if you've paid attention, if you've, been, if you've been listening in, if you've been tuning in, you'll, you'll have noticed ever since uh, the, the pandemic, I don't know about you, but there has been a lot more prayers going up. There's been a lot more prayer meetings that have been happening. Uh, and now that we're not limited to just, uh, you know, making sure we're in the building because we know we can, we can be on Zoom, we can be on Skype, we can be uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever social media platform you use, YouTube, whatever the case may be, and still be connected with other people that are praying. And as I began to look at this, I thought to myself, there is a sound. And when you look at the Bible, there are many, many examples of sound. Sound is an important part of communication, as I said. It plays a key role. Uh, if I just stood here and looked at you uh, and did actions, you'd probably get, try and get what I'm trying to say. But without sound coming out of my mouth, you wouldn't get the full picture of what I'm trying to portray to you. I could maybe dance this sermon, if I can. Uh, I, could, <laughs> I could probably try and do... Uh, maybe sign language, if I knew sign language, but it wouldn't portray what exactly I wanted to say without sound. Sound adds something to what I'm trying to portray. And obviously, there's actions that go with sounds, but sound is a key part of communication. It is an important and integral part of communication. And so I looked at sound in the Bible, and, and I said to myself, this, this has to be important. There has to be an importance to it because um, there, there, is no, there is a reason why sound comes before a lot of things. When you look at the Bible, there's a reason sound comes before a lot of things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In verse number three, it says, and God said... And God said, before God said, what does the Bible say? The, and the, the earth was filled, uh, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then when God said, when the sound came out of God, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Sound produced something. Out of my sound, I can produce happiness. I can tell you a joke that will make you happy. But I can also tell you something very critical that will make you very sad. Sound produces something. And he says, God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from darkness, and so forth. And God said, and God said, he continues to say, God said, verse number six, and God said, let there, and, and then again, uh, God said in verse number nine, and so God proclaims things to come into fruition into the earth by just speaking. And out of the sound of God, things began to happen. And God created the earth. In the five days he created the earth, he spoke things into existence. There was a sound that came out of God that spoke things into existence. And so I looked at sound in the Old Testament, and sound was a key part of the Old Testament. Uh, when you look at the children of Israel, or when you look at, uh, in, in many times in the, in the ancient days, uh, battles were started with a sound. There was a sound that went out that told you it's time for battle. There's a sound that went out that told you it was time to run and hide because the enemy was coming. There was a sound that told you it was time to worship. There was a sound that came out that told you, now this was going to happen. So there were sounds for different things that were about, about to happen. 
you know, when the children of Israel were, were moving from one place to the next, when God uh, decided it was time for them to move, there was a sound that was played. That, and uh, when they heard the sound, they knew now it's the time for us to pack ourselves and move to where God wants us to be. And so sound is very important. When you look at the children of Israel, Joshua leading the children of Israel, they come to the wall of Jericho, and for six days they're just marching around quiet. It must have felt very strange for the people. It must have looked very weird for the people that were inside the city of Jericho because they had heard about what the children of Israel had done. They knew of the power, the capability of the children of Israel and everything that they could do. They had heard of the conquests, the battles that had been won by the children of Israel. And so to see them do nothing for six days, you know, if, if it's the first day that, that, that they march, and you, you know, you look at them, you think to yourself, okay. But six days later, they're still doing the same thing. You, you think to yourself, what is going on? But then God had specific instruction that when you march around the seventh time, you're going to shout. And when you shout, something is going to happen. And that sound, the sound of triumph, brought the walls of Jericho down. There is a sound. There is a sound. And so, again, as I was looking at this, I thought to myself, what is it about our generation that, that causes us to, to see the world, to, to see God in a different light? What sound is God producing for our generation today? What sound is God producing for us today as people of God that we, we can look and say something is about to happen? We talk about revival. We talk about revival all the time. And people are, are, are hearing of revival. And you say revival is coming. But what is the sound of revival? What is the sound of revival? Are we tuned in to the sound of revival? Can we hear what God is saying about revival and how it's coming to happen? Sound is very important. Jesus spoke many things to his disciples, to those that were following him, to those that came for healing, and to those that were just generally there and thereabout. Out of our mouth, the Bible says, we, we, we curse people, we say things that are, are evil, but we can also say things that are good. With the sound of our, of our voice, we can bless people. And with the same sound, we can also curse people. But God is saying, oh, as I was looking at this, the, 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 the fact that there is a sound, I thought to myself, what sound am I hearing? What sound am I hearing? Or what, what sound am I choosing to listen to? Because in our world today, we're filled with all kinds of sounds, all kinds of nuisances, all kinds of um, media that are trying to grab our attention. And so they will play a sound that will, will try and grab our attention. They will play something that will try and, and you know, get us to, to look at it and say, you know, what, I, I'm interested. I'm, I'm fascinated. What, what is going on here? You know, you have all, social, all kinds of social media platforms. And, and you know, young people nowadays are, are be, have become, or, or our generation are becoming so uh, in, entangled in social media and, and being um, part of what is going on that they, they lose the sound that they're supposed to be listening to. You know, we look at the news uh, and all the uh, news outlets and, and what they're saying to us. You know, they say there's, there's a, a fuel uh, driver shortage and everyone runs to the petrol because they're panicking. They want to get petrol, you know. Uh, and, and there was no need for that. But because something was spoken out, people panicked. And it caused, it caused a lot of issues for people that didn't need to have issues. And so our sound or the sound we listen to is important. The sound we listen to is important. The thing is that there is always a sound. There is always a sound. But the sound you tune yourself into is very, very important. 
like I say, there is three types of sound. There is the infrasonic sounds that we cannot hear below 20 hertz. There is the sonic sounds that we can hear. But there's also the ultrasonic sounds that, you know, our ears cannot pick up. But when we look at the spiritual side of things, there are sounds that we need to tune ourselves into that we can hear from God. We as the body need to be able to be tuned in to the frequency of God so that we can hear the sound of God. So when people say there is a sound of revival, we don't just go where? Because we're not tuned in to the right sound. We can see the sound of revival. We, we, we need to be like elephants that can, can see, can hear it miles away. That it's coming. It's coming. This sound is coming. And so on the day of Pentecost, or when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Before anything happened, there came a sound. Before anything happened, there came a sound. Just as, as in the beginning, before the world was created, there came a sound. Before the, 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 the infilling of the Holy Spirit, there was a sound. And so before anything can happen in our lives, there is going to be a sound. The question is, are you listening to the sound? Are you listening to that sound? Are you listening to the sound? Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It was a sound as of. It was a sound as of. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Can you imagine being in that place? That the sound fills the whole house. Just as we were worshipping here a few minutes ago. And the whole house was filled with the sound of our praises rising up to God. I can only imagine what it would have been like for these people. These 120 so people that were in the upper room. As the Holy Spirit filled the place with sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Before God could breathe upon them, there was a sound that came. A sound that came upon that place. And so this afternoon, as I look at this, I think to myself, what sound are you tuned into? What are you listening into? Are you listening to what the world is telling you? Are you listening to what, you know, uh, the, the celebrities are telling you about, you know, how you should be, you know, how you should act, what, makes, what should make you happy. Because nowadays, we have people that tell us what should make us happy. That if you post something on Instagram and you don't get at least uh, 20 of your friends, if you have 10, um, then there's something wrong. You know, if you don't get enough likes, then there's something wrong. What, well, you're doing something wrong. You know, are we listening to those types of people? Who are we tuning to the sound of to listen to say, yes, I am listening and I am tuning into this. I am reminded of the story of Samuel. Samuel, a young boy dedicated to God by his mother. To serve God. And God decides to call Samuel. God decides to call Samuel. And God calls Samuel and tell, you know, calls Samuel. And Samuel the first time doesn't understand. He goes to Eli, says, Eli, uh, Master, have you called me? And he says, No, I, I haven't. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. No, go, go back and sleep. And he, it happens the second time. And Eli says the same thing. Sorry, no, I didn't call you. Go back and sleep. He says, But when you wake up, when, he, when you hear the sound again, I want you to say, here I am, Lord, speak, for your servant hears. And so Samuel was listening, but he wasn't tuned in to the right frequency. What he thought was the, 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 the priest Eli calling was actually God calling. God was calling him. And maybe this morning you're listening to something. You're listening to God say something. And you're not quite tuned in to what exactly God is saying because 
you think to yourself, maybe it's this. Because I, I would say to myself, I, I do tend to have that. Sometimes I would hear God say something, but I think to myself, maybe it's just my thought. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's, 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 it's wishing something good should happen. Maybe it's just, you know, God, it, it cannot be. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. But when we tuned in, when we are tuned in to what God is saying, when we are tuned in to the voice of God, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and they come to me. And so our, 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 our frequency needs to be tuned in to what God is saying. Even from the beginning, even after God had created the world, um, after, uh, just after the fall of, of Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it says, And they heard a sound from the Lord, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard a sound. They heard a sound. Before they could see God, they heard a sound of God walking. But what, what, what happened is that they, they were hiding. Adam and Eve were hiding themselves because they had sinned. They had fallen. And they say that he, in verse number 10, he says, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I heard, I heard your voice in the garden. I heard your voice. This, this afternoon, my question for you is, whose voice are you tuned into? What frequency are you tuned into? What frequency are you tuned into? There is a sound, a sound that is calling us, calling us to different things, calling us to different ministries, calling us to different places of work, calling us to different uh, avenues of, of our lives, calling us maybe to let go of things that we should be letting go, calling us to baptism, calling us to all kinds of things. But this morning, what frequency are you tuned in to? Who is the voice in your life? Or what is the voice in your life? We can be bogged down by all the noises around us. We need to be careful of noise. Noise can be distracting. It is distracting. It can take away from what you're trying to hear. It can take away from the, the clearness of the message that you're trying to, or that is trying to be portrayed to you or trying to be given to you. But how are you tuned in to God's frequency? If we are not tuned in to the right frequency, we can miss the voice of God. We can miss the calling of God. We can miss the purpose of God. We have to be reminded to tune ourselves in to the right frequency, to get ourselves to the right place where we can be with one accord with God. And that when God speaks, we hear because we're tuned in to the right frequency. We're tuned in to the right wavelength to be able to hear what God is saying to us in our day. So the question again I, I raised this morning, this afternoon, is there is a sound, but what are you hearing? There is a sound, but what are you hearing? For some of us, we're hearing sounds we shouldn't be hearing. We're listening to things we shouldn't be listening. But God is here. And God can help us to retune ourselves to the right sound, to be able to hear what is saying to us this afternoon. Let's all stand this morning, this afternoon. There is a sound coming from heaven. 
a sound that is for our generation, a sound that is specific to each and every single one of us. God speaks to every person individually. What God will say to you is not what God will say to me. God will speak to every person individually. I'm going to ask us now to close our eyes, bow our heads, and we're going to just begin to connect with God. Just begin to connect with God. If you will, just bow your head, bow your head, close your eyes, raise your hands if you can, and just begin to connect with God. Begin to connect yourself to God. Get yourself in the frequency that allows God to speak to you directly. Because God wants to download something in your life. God wants to say something to you. God wants to speak to you. Because before anything can happen in your life, God has to speak to you. He speaks and things begin to happen. He says it and it becomes what he wants it to be. And so this afternoon, as you raise your voice, as you begin to pray, as you begin to seek God, as you begin to ask of God, let your frequencies be tuned in to the right wavelength so that you are in commune with God, so that you can hear the voice of God clearly for your life. I don't know what it is that you need this morning. And uh, we, we, we can open up, the, we'll open up the altar to pray for people that need specific prayer. But God can speak to you right where you are. God can speak to you right where you are. You just have to tune yourself in to the right frequency. Tune yourself in to hear what God is saying in your life. Right here, right now, God can speak to you. God can speak to you. God can speak to us this morning. Let's begin to pray in Jesus' name. Just begin to pray. Just begin to seek God. Just begin to ask God. What is it that he's saying in your life this morning? What is it that he's saying in your life this morning? Speak to us, Lord, we pray. Speak to us, Lord, we pray. Touch our hearts, oh God, we pray. Open up our spiritual ears, oh Lord Jesus, so that we may hear what you're saying for us this afternoon. Open up our minds, O oh God, that we may understand what you're saying, O oh God. Speak to us, O oh God. Speak to us, O oh God. Let your spirit come and fill this place like a mighty rushing wind, O oh God. Let your spirit fill this place, O oh God. Speak to us, Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you that need specific prayer, the altar is open. We can pray with you this afternoon that God would reach out into whatever situation that you need. Please do come if you do need prayer. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, God.